in this video today, I'll be going over what film and photography kit that I take with me when traveling abroad. And I'll be going through my top tips when traveling abroad with film and photography kit. I'll be breaking the video down into what bags I wanna take with me, and then what my camera choice is gonna be, what lenses I'll take, and then any accessories that I'll also wanna have with me when I'm traveling abroad. Before you go ahead and cram everything into a bag, get on a plane, what it's really useful to do is actually sit down and work out what it is that you wanna do while you're abroad. Is your focus gonna be mainly video? Is it gonna be stills? Is it gonna be a combination of all of them? Are you really restricted where you go in terms of the amount of gear that you can take? And are you gonna be traveling mainly on foot? Are you gonna be tra traveling in vehicles? All of these things are gonna determine what it is that you wanna take with you. And so it's really worth planning ahead and working out what you want to do. Personally for me when I'm going abroad generally my focus is on video but I'll also like to do a lot of stills and in the last couple of years I'll always have my drone with me, be able to capture unique aerial views is absolutely fantastic and unless I'm going somewhere like uh, a big city or say a US national park where flying a drone I just can't do it then that drone's always going to be with me. Now what it helps to do is usually travel with a very understanding partner. So I often go away with my wife or my friend and the benefit of that is that they will often carry one of my bags as hand luggage with them and it just means that therefore I can take that little bit of extra gear with me. Now I will always take pretty much everything as hand luggage. I don't want to be checking any expensive cameras, lenses, uh, fragile things like drones into hold luggage. So when I'm flying, I'll always have pretty much everything as hand luggage. The exceptions to that are things like a tripod and a small travel slider. They will go in my check luggage. I'll generally wrap them in clothes or as in towels. And they're sufficiently short enough uh, to fit within a suitcase. This is a travel tripod. It's nice and small and compact. And the same with the slider, slider 60 centimeters, fits nicely in the check luggage. But apart from that, pretty much everything else stays with me at all times. So we'll start with the bags that I take with me. These are arguably one of the most important bits of kit because if they're too small, you can't fit enough stuff in. If they're too big, you often won't be able to get on the aircraft with them. And if they're too flimsy or they fall apart, they're gonna let you down. So having a good bag is absolutely essential. So this bag here carries all of my photography and filmmaking gear, so in terms of camera bodies, lenses and accessories, and this bag here is for the drone. I've done a separate video on this, so if you're interested in this particular backpack, do check out the video, it's linked in the description below. So starting off with the bag here, this is a Lowepro Vertex 300AW, and I've had this bag for two, three years now, it's been around the world, uh, it's done tens, if not hundreds of thousands of miles on plains, through forests, through up mountains, through national parks, all sorts of different terrains, snow, wind, hail, hot, cold, you name it, it's been through it. And not only has it got loads of space, it also fits as carry-on luggage on pretty much every airline. And really important for me as well is it actually will go under the seat in front. So you don't have to put it in the overheads, especially if a plane's really busy and there's no room, I can actually get it underneath the seat on an airplane. So we'll go ahead and open it up and go through the kit that we have inside. In terms of camera bodies that I take with me, I will have a Panasonic GH4, which is not actually in this bag because I'm using it to film right now. And this is a fantastic camera uh, for video, shoots 4K internally. The GH5 has just been released, which I'm very excited about and I've pre-ordered, so I can't wait to get hold of one of those. But in terms of run and gun filming, the GH4 is a small body, fits nicely in the bag. I have a Metabones adapter for it so I can use Canon glass. I shoot primarily on Canon glass because my stills camera is a Canon 5D Mark III. I used to use this a little bit for video, but with the GH4, it's primarily a stills camera. It's fantastic, shoots really good stills, great for landscape photography, great in low light, uh, full frame sensor. So in terms of getting great stills, uh, 5D Mark III, brilliant camera. Now in terms of lenses, what I'll do once again before I go away is I'll work out what it is I'm gonna be mostly shooting. Now I do a lot of landscape sort of stuff in both photography and filming, and so I want a wide range of lenses from very super wide lenses up to sort of medium telephoto. 
Now, if I'm very restricted in terms of weight and what I want to take is only one or two lenses, something like the Canon 24 to 105, which is an F4 constant aperture across the zoom range. It's got a wide zoom range. The 24 to 105 covers lots of focal lengths. It's not super wide, so I'll also have a Canon 16 to 35, which is actually, once again, what I'm filming on now. Those two lenses covers you from 16 to 105 millimeters at a constant F4 aperture. Really sharp lenses, really good. So if I'm looking to keep weight right down, probably just those two lenses would do me. The other lens which I really like, which does come with me, but I have to pack it in, is a 70 to 200 f2.8. That's obviously a larger and heavier lens. And so unless I'm really needing that uh, 200 millimeter focal length, that will often get left behind because it takes up a lot of room in the bag. A Couple of other lenses I have here, Canon 24 f1.4. Really good for low light. I use that a lot for nighttime photography, astrophotography. Another astrophotography lens I have is a Samyang 14 millimeter f2.8. Really good for low light, really good for astrophotography as well. Another Samyang lens which is really good is the 35 millimeter T1.5. Once again, fast prime lens. It's the cine version, great for filming with. Now the other bit of kit that I like to travel with is a handheld gimbal and this is the Xeon Crane. Now this is small and it's modular so it has a base unit here which unscrews. So being able to take a gimbal with me for handheld work is great. I'll often, if I'm not traveling with any check luggage, I can uh, do away with a tripod and take a gimbal with me instead. So moving on to some accessories that I will have with me. Spare power, so high capacity battery packs, really useful to have for charging phones, tablets, those sort of devices. Um, converters, so socket converters. I often recommend taking ones that will give you two or three sockets. Sometimes you can be staying in hotels and they'll only have one or two sockets. Um, so being able to double up on those to charge gear is really useful. Um, camera cleaning equipment, chargers, <coughs> torches, so a head torch, uh, really useful, especially for looking in bags when you're in dark locations, um, really useful to have. A little video light, um, so once again, similar to the head torch, this has a cold shoe mount, so I can not only use it as a torch, but I can mount it on the camera. Fingerless gloves, I tend to go to a lot of cold locations, I've just come back from Iceland, so having those in my camera bag, really important. And then in, on top, another great thing about this backpack is that it will fit a full-size laptop, and so uh, I can take one of those away with me to edit and uh, review footage on the road, and that goes in top, it's nicely protected. We've got side pockets here, so I have a small multi-tool Leatherman, that's really useful. Camera cleaning solution. One thing that you want to make sure that you do is put this in your checked baggage because if it's in your hand luggage, it's a liquid, they're going to pull it at security, you're going to lose that and when your camera gets dirty, you won't be able to clean it on the road. So I generally put that in with my toiletries. And then other odds and ends, tape, always useful to have, pen, you never know when you might need a pen, intervalometer, great for time lapse. And then something which I never go away without is also a SD or a multi card reader, so CF card, micro SD, all the different types that you need. And then finally, a few filters. We've got a circular polarizer, 10 stop ND filter, a UV filter. I have this especially if I'm in a, nearby the sea, anywhere I'm getting spray, don't want to get salt water on my lenses, so UV filter just to protect lenses when I'm in sort of harsh environments. So go ahead now and have a quick look at the other backpack. This is a hard shelled drone backpack. So I have DJI Phantom in here. I have batteries uh, in LiPo bags. Really important when you're traveling on planes is to discharge your batteries, put them in LiPo bags, nice and safe. Never ever put LiPo batteries in your checked luggage. Uh, they have to go in your carry-on luggage and really best practice to make sure that they are discharged before you take them on there and they're in lipo bags. Controller, then I'll have a tablet as well, spare props and other accessories for the drone. If you're 
looking to really keep a compact setup. Obviously the likes of the DJI Mavic now, it's a tiny little drone that will fit in with a lot of this gear and you may not need a second bag for it. What I actually did was I was away traveling with this. This was before the Mavic had come out and I needed to fit everything in a single backpack because I was going to a very remote part of Iceland where I could only travel with one bag and it was all on foot and it was all hiking. So I actually made some adjustments to this bag here and that allowed me to carry a drone, a full frame DSLR and two lenses. So I was doing a combination of aerial filming and some stills work on the ground and I got that all into a single bag. My other tip is when traveling through airports is give yourself extra time, especially when going through security. And when you do go through security, just be super friendly, super nice. Most times you're never gonna have a problem, but when you're traveling with lots of electronic gear, security will wanna just double check through, maybe take a swipe of stuff. And if you're friendly and nice, it just makes your life a lot easier. And it generally means that you're gonna sail through without any problems. So really important, just be nice, be friendly, flash a smile, and it's just gonna make your life traveling through airports a lot easier. So hopefully this has been interesting and useful. If you have any questions about gear or traveling with gear, please do drop them in the comments below and I'll make sure I get back to you. If you like the video, hit the like button, please do subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.